Hey, it's another week, another recipe, and oh my goodness, I have just found an absolute gem of a cake that I just cannot wait to share with you. Come join me for this little slice of heaven on a plate. Hey everyone, welcome back to my kitchen. My name is Courtney Morris, and I cook history's forgotten recipes out of random cookbooks I find and sometimes websites. And today, we are headed to the 1940s with a special treat uh, specifically to celebrate my birthday. So I'm kind of excited about this. If you're new here, thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoy it. And if you're coming back for more, as always, my utmost thanks for sticking around. All right, let's get into it. All right, so today we are going to be making a Lazy Daisy cake from the 1940s. Although I did read when I was researching this recipe that I think it's older than that because there were people saying that their grandmother's grandmother had this recipe. So it might stem back far. This seemed to be a pretty popular recipe in the 1940s. And the reason it's called apparently the Lazy Daisy Cake is because it's one of those things where you just, oops, I have guests coming over. I guess I need something quick to put in. I mean, it really looks like a simple, your simple vanilla cake recipe. However, the thing that got me on this, and I had heard about this cake before, but the thing that got me was the pictures that I had seen of the frosting. And if you like German chocolate cake because of the coconutty stuff on top, you're gonna probably like this if it hopefully turns out. I can't imagine this not turning out. All right, so since I'm the only person in my family who can eat sugar and not die a thousand deaths, I had to make this cake smaller than the original recipe. So I quartered it, yay math. I'll put the full recipe in the description for you, but this is gonna make a very small miniature cake just for me to celebrate my 37th birthday, which actually is happening the day this comes out. So I figure I need to celebrate somehow, and I'm not a big fan of non-sugar stuff. It's just kind of, if you know, you know. Anyways, so in this case, you need an egg and vanilla. And then we beat this together until it is a pale yellow. And then we add in the routine flour, baking powder, and salt. Now, the one thing that I noticed about this recipe is that there's no oil. I mean, there's a tablespoon of butter in my condensed version. I mean, I think there's a quarter cup of butter, but it seems like not a lot of uh, fat in it. So I'm wondering where it gets its moisture from. But maybe the frosting's so good that it compensates for it. I don't know, but apparently if it was that popular, it has to be good. Now it just looks like a regular cake batter. And I need to go grab my burner because I have to boil, I have to boil my butter and my milk together and then add it in. I'm not sure what that does. I'm not entirely sure what the, what the chemistry behind that is, but I'm just doing what the recipe tells me to. Slave to the recipe. All right, hold on a second. Okay, so I'm gonna turn that up. Where's my milk go? Add in my teeny tiny little bit of milk. Teeny tiny bit of, a teeny tiny bit of butter. And while I'm at it, if any of you guys wanted to know, I got this little burner off Amazon a couple months ago for I think about 24 bucks. And it had decent reviews and it's, it's good and it works and I have used it. We had a big family get together a while back and it did come in handy to have an extra uh, hot plate burner. But if I were to do it over or the next time I need one, I would actually go up in price point and get a little higher quality because it did come with a sticker that said that this part gets super hot, but um, it always just kind of smells like it's melting. <laughs> so it's, it's, not a, it's not bad, it's not terrible, and it doesn't, hasn't melted yet, but I think I would definitely go a little higher price point, a little better quality, just in case you guys are in the market for one. I hope this turns out A for my birthday, but also B because last week's video was crap. If you didn't see that, it was a mock crab recipe that I didn't, I'm, I'm not, uh, yeah, I'll just have to watch it. It was, it was bad, it was, it was real bad. Okay, that is a bubbling and it is thick now. So maybe that, oh. <laughs> well, that was kind of fun to watch. It's smoky. <laughs> Okay, well, it doesn't smell like it's melting anymore. It just smells burnt now. <sighs> okay, so now it says to pour this in and beat. So we will do that. A little extra liquid makes it look more like a cake batter. It's very runny, nice and pale yellow. It smells like a vanilla cake. But it's, I mean, it's pretty much, I think, all this is. I think the, I think the key to this cake is the frosting. 
it, it definitely seems like it because I mean a, a vanilla cake is kind of a vanilla cake if you know what I mean. So now I'm ready to put it in my cake pan and bake it and I am making a little mini six inch one. I kind of wish I had a four inch one just because they're really cute. Um, I am a fan of parchment paper on the bottom of my cake pans and I probably could have done that better and used less, wasted less paper but oh well. Um, I know some people like doing the butter and flour to keep things from sticking. I just like parchment paper. It works so well. Okay, well, it's cute so far. I'm going to stick it in at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. The original recipe said for 30 to 35 minutes, but that was for a normal size 9 by 13 sheet cake. So I'm just going to keep an eye on this, and when a toothpick comes clean, I will take it out. Okay, so I just stuck that in the oven. I put the timer on for 20 minutes, and I'll check it then and just kind of play it by ear and see how much more time it might need. And now, on to the exciting part. So we're going to make this icing. So in a saucepan, combine brown sugar, butter, cream, cook over medium heat until boiling, and then turn off and stir in the coconut. For my little recipe, I need six tablespoons of brown sugar, uh, three tablespoons of butter, and my butter got really melted, so one, two, and then an eighth cup of cream. Okay, and we're supposed to get that on medium heat and stir until boiling. And also my apologies if there's blurry B-roll shots. My little tripod for the camera that I use uh, for B-roll has now two broken legs for some reason. It must have just hit the end of its life because it's not holding up anything. So if you see any shots that are going like this, well, that's why. My only question is though is that since this seems to be so fast and so easy, I love it, but I mean, is, did all 1940s housewives have shredded coconut on hand? Because the only reason I do is because I had needed it for a prior recipe for something else. I don't remember what, I had some left over. So this is starting to boil and I'm going to stick that in. And now it kind of looks like the topping of a German chocolate cake. I keep wanting to call it a German Shepherd cake, and I've been doing that since I was a little kid. And I learned over the years to catch myself, but it's just right where my tongue goes. It's German Shepherd cake, but it's German chocolate cake. But all right, this is done. It only took 20 minutes. Um, it smells delicious. It smells like a vanilla cake, and I'm excited. Now, it didn't say to cool it off first because we're gonna put the icing on and then stick it right under the broiler. So it's just gonna stay hot. I don't really have to worry about this cooling down to melt icing. Try to decide because in a 9 by 13 sheet pan you just leave it in there and then frost it but this is a little cute cake and I kind of want it to look cute. So when in doubt get out ye old pizza pan because all my other, it's a little warm, all my other uh, cookie sheets are in my gigantic freezer still freezing yet more blackberries for the season. So this would have been a better in a 4 inch cake pan I think for this amount of cake because it did only fill it up halfway like if you see that which isn't bad it's just gonna be very short but that's okay it's just for me and I'm short okay so let's turn that out peel that off looks very nice a little, little thin nice and spongy though okay so a four inch one would be so darn cute Okay, so I did read in a comment that somebody made a poke cake out of this where you poke holes in it so your icing and your frosting can run down into it. I kind of want to do that. My recipe didn't tell me to though. Okay, we'll just, deal, we'll just do this and then if I like it, I'll just make another one. Okay, so I guess I don't have to really worry about it looking that pretty because it's probably going to caramelize and kind of ooze down the side a little bit too. But I mean, just that looks kind of... Oh, it smells like a maple donut, you guys. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's already going down the sides, which is actually kind of cool. I kind of got like a unintended drip cake effect. Okay, my, bro my broiler is on and I'm gonna go stick it in there. I have to stick it in until the whole thing is bubbly, not burnt, bubbly. That's gonna be a key word here. This is hot, so I'm gonna make it quick, but do you see how that's starting to bubble? I think it's supposed to bubble all over is what it said, so I'm gonna let it in there for a few more minutes, but I gotta watch this close so it doesn't burn. Okay, this, I am so excited about this. It, it did drip down, which I'm super happy about, and the top is nice and brownish. 
Now to try to get this off, I have brilliant ideas and a pancake spatula. Try and get this off in one piece before it glues itself to a pizza pan. It's so cute. It's so tiny. And it smells divine. And because I am celebrating my birthday right now by myself, and with you guys, I guess, I'm going to stick a candle in it. Okay, so before I cut into this, I have to make a wish. So I'm gonna let you in on this wish and I wish that you guys, all my viewers, have prosperity, love, wonderful things and abundance come to you in the next year. And I wish that this channel could prosper and that I could help you guys enjoy a little bit of my corner of the internet a little bit more. <sighs> Yay. I don't think I've ever been so excited to really cut into a cake. Um, now, it did say to cool it off, and it is actually quite cool. The, the topping is nicely browned. It is not sticky at all. And I am just going to go, go for it. It does crunch a little with that little caramelizing on the top. Oh, it's spongy. It's like spongy, spongy. I cannot get over how much this smells like a maple donut. It's so tiny. It's <laughs> so cute. I, the icing is nice and like, it's like a glaze. It really is like a maple icing glaze. But... Wow. Okay. So it's still warmer than it should be. It should be, you know, cooled off completely, but I don't know if I want it cooled off completely. That tastes... That tastes like a German chocolate cake, met a maple donut, and had this. That is a little bit of heaven on a plate. Oh my gosh, that cake is so fluffy. I don't know how, but yeah, just the cake part is nice. It's not super flavorful. Like I said before, it's just a vanilla cake, but it's, it's moist, but spongy. Uh, but the, the topping, that is a coconut caramel candy coating on top of my cake. And my gosh, that's good. Wow. Okay. Okay. This is probably one of the best birthday cakes I think I've ever made myself. Hands down, my favorite recipe I have made yet. This one does push the tomato cake out of first position as far as favorite cakes go, because that one is still really good. I really, really did like that one, but this is... If you've made it this far, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you try this. Try, please try this one. Tell me how it went. Tell me how you like it. This is superb. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button. Join our little community. I have a lot of fun bringing you guys these recipes and talking with you about your memories. And feel free to drop me a recipe in the comments. I would love to try something out for you. And if you need something else to watch after this, go ahead and check out the tomato soup cake. It is surprising, and it still, I think, is one of my second favorites on this channel. It was so, so good. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a little like so I know that I am making content that you are enjoying. And hit the little bell notification so you're notified every time I upload a video, which is every Monday, with a new historical recipe experiment. And this experiment was a winner. All right, I will see you next week with a new historical experiment, and I hope it's just as good as this one. All right, have a great week. Bye.